Hello everyone. Welcome back to the second part of the uh, of the session, which is related to the performance enhancement for data warehouses. So, before we in the first part of this uh, of this lecture, we focused on uh, we we focused on uh, the techniques that are needed for improving the performance of queries on a data warehouse. Uh, we highlighted three major the th three main techniques uh, the first one of which was uh, materialized views the second and the third will be covered in the next lecture which is related to indexing and partitioning now when we pick up uh, materialized views we talked about the differences between a normal view and a materialized view and the challenges that comes with when storing a view permanently on your system and the first challenge that we are looking at right now is view maintenance because now we have created views which are persistently stored on your database we need to make sure that whenever there is a change on the base table you can update the views connected to those base tables so there are very there are a couple of approaches that are available and all of these approaches are categorized based on uh, based on the amount of information they use uh, from the base tables so uh, the last part of the lecture we talked about uh, the two main classes of uh, view maintenance algorithms uh, the, the first one is algorithms using full information so in this in this one we focus on using the information from the base table so any algorithm that uses the information of the base tables to update uh, the uh, to update the views to update the materialized views is referred to uh, those algorithms that uses full information the second class of algorithms are algorithms that use partial information in this case the algorithms use information from the materialized views and constraints key constraints uh, that are coming from the transaction itself so if something is added the, the information of the new element that is being added along with the view itself is enough to to update the information in the view rather than going back and looking at the base tables so we will go through these two al the uh, algorithms which is for full information and for partial information for the different types of transactions and see how they can perform view maintenance for addition and, or insertion and deletion. As you mentioned earlier in the in the previous session, that the uh, the concept of uh, updating the data records is not considered here because updating is simply adding and deleting. So it will delete the previous instance and it will add a new instance. So the basic operations are two, which is uh, insertion and deletion. So let's talk about view maintenance uh, for for algorithms that use full information so algorithms using full information the basic algorithm is uh, for non recursive views so we'll have two types of views uh, when we discuss the algorithms for full information the first one is non recursive views and the other one is using outer join views so non recursive views are those views which are you know you, don't, you are using joins or unions or negation or aggregation of information from one or more uh, tables to form the view uh, and the basic algorithm that is used here is is referred to as the counting algorithm this algorithm counts the number of alternative derivations that every record in the view has so a, a, if a record has the certain occurrences in the base tables you have a counter for that in the view table so that whenever a new addition is done the counter is updated whenever a deletion is done the counter is, uh, is subtracted so you know if something is is there or not there by using a counting algorithm usually in this in this case a count is added the a column of count is added to the view to keep track of the possible derivations for each record Hence, if we delete a record in the base relation, we can check whether there are any other instances uh, available for that record. And if not, we can delete the instance from the view itself. 
And if there are more instances available, then we keep track of it. Then we keep track of it. Uh, let's talk about the first one, which is algorithms using for information for non-recursive views. Let's say, for example, we have a table called sales. Now, this table has three uh, attributes, which is product key, uh, the, the customer key and the quantity, which is the same table that we used earlier. Now, we have a product table where we have the product key, which is now the dimension table. If you remember, sales is the fact table and product is the, is the table that is used for uh, having information about the product uh, and this is the dimension table and it has product key and category of the product and the price for the product. Now what we do is we we perform the view operation and we create a view called food prods. Okay, so we are keeping track of all the sales that happen, all the sales that happen which are of type food because we know category is a variable, uh, is an attribute inside the product dimension table. So we write our join, we write our view creation as like this. We have uh, a set of keys, set of customer keys. We, know we just need to keep track of information of the customers. Uh, and we also, as you remember earlier, we mentioned that we also have a column called count, which keeps track of the number of iterations, number of uh, you know, times that key is referred to in the base tables. So we have the customer key and then for we extract only those customers who made a purchase from the sales table from the sales table which has a category of food now see we're using product into sales because we want category is not available in the sales table so we have to go and look up at the the type of the product so we have to match the product with the product in the product key and we have to identify the category of that product and if the category of the product is food we keep we store that customer key in our table called food products so in in short we are keeping track of all those customers that ordered at least one product in the food category okay so this is our uh, you know this is our view this is the reason why we created a view so let's have a sample of elements we have c1 c2 c4 which are the customers and they are they have like c1 ordered one uh, food product c2 ordered two food products and c4 ordered 10 food products now so this uh, the sql query for creating this view is create view the name of the view which is food prods as and then we specify the query which is select distinct CK because we, we don't want to repeat it. We just want to keep track of uh, the customer uh, once. And for each customer, we count the number of times uh, they occur if where from sales and product where the first of all, we make a join. This is the normal join. As you remember, this is a inner join. So we, we check the product key. If the product key is same, we get the if the category is food, then we count the number of instances and then we store that instance in the food prods table for each of our customers. Now, as I mentioned, so let's expand it a bit. We have now the sales with some values. We have the, we have we have uh, we have customer C one ordering product P one for uh, twenty. Uh, the amount is twenty, and then product P two P one is again ordered by customer C two for quantity hundred, and P two for customer C two uh, ordered a quantity of fifty. And then we have a products table, which, which has more information about these products, which is P1, P2, and P3, out of which we can see that P1 and P2 are both food products category. P3 is a non-food category. And the price is given, which is, you know, just for the sake, we are not using it. And then we have the sample view, materialized view that we created, which is food products in the previous slide. And since we see that C1 has ordered one uh, food product and C2 has ordered P1 and P2 which are both food products so we store the count as 2. Now let's see the operations right so let's first start with the deletion operation so let's start with the deletion operation on the food products so let's say we have the sales uh, table and we are planning to delete the uh, record uh, P1, C2 and 100 which is the second record in our sales table so we want to delete this record now how will it affect the materialized view now what we can see over here is uh, you remember i told you that we create delta tables right delta tables are these tables which are 
created which are just projections they are not uh, they are not saved they are not they are not saved in the database these are projection tables of the changes that are happening and then we just merge those changes with our original view to get the the final view so this is a projection which is a delta minus we are using a delta minus table here because it's it's removing it's supposed to it's supposed to whenever you merge it it's supposed to remove the the uh, the item which is common in in, in that so if there is a common it's not supposed to remove or update the item based on whatever operation you are trying to do so it's, it's going to subtract that information okay when you merge these table with the materialized view so in this you can see that uh, I just write the same thing so I'm, I'm expected that since C this record is removed and since P1 since P1 is a product since P1 is a product and P1 is supposed to be a food category so I have added that C2 over here which is removed and a count of minus 1 is added you see the first thing that you notice is I cannot create this delta minus say for example let, let me let me take another example so that you can understand it we are discussing full information right we are just we're talking about full information so how uh, how is it this full information so projection is created from the, the from this item, right? P P uh, the projection is created with C two because C two is the one the record is deleted where C two is involved, and for C two I want to minus one. Now how is it full information? Because I cannot add C two unless and until I know that P one is a food product. If suppose I was removing P three, then the projection would have been empty because there is no effect on the view because P the the view only contains uh, information about customers who purchased food products so p3 is a non-food product so that's why whenever we are creating the projection if we refer to information in the base tables then that means we are using full information you will see later on then when we when we talk about partial information we never refer back to the base tables okay so remember that so, so that you understand what is the difference between a full information and and the uh, and the partial information okay so that's why how we created this projection the projection is created c2 is added and minus 1 is done only because p1 which is related to c2 is actually a non is actually a food product okay so that's why we added this projection now the projection is created once the projection is created we merge it with our original view which is food prods now once we merge it we can see that c2 is there which has two so we'll subtract one from it so it will the resultant part of it will become one and that's it that's how deletion works again as you saw that we are using full information i will see that in the in this slide because i think i added that now what is the effect of insertion we saw the effect of deletion and we will go we went back to our product table to check whether the product is a food product or not the same thing will happen again now so you can see that I have a sales table. Now in this case, I want to add a new record, which is P2, C1, and 40. So I, I will have to again create a projection. Now this time I'm using a delta plus. Delta minus was, sub was supposed to subtract information. Delta plus is supposed to add information to my view. So when I create this projection table, I will have to, again, I cannot add C1. I cannot increment the value of C1 unless until I know that the product that is purchased by C1 is actually a food product. So again, I have to go back to the product database, check whether P2 is a food product. And then if it is a food product, then only I have to do this. Then only I can add it to my projection. Okay, so once we I do that, I do the same thing. I merge it with my view. And once I merge it with my view, you can see that C1 is incremented by one. And then the resultant view would be something like this. So this is the effect of insertion and deletion. Now, since we are using the counting algorithm, we have to, whenever we add anything into our view, we keep track of the number of instances in the sales table. In the sales table so this one and two the two and two that is incremented the count you are seeing is the number of instances for that record which we are interested in which is the customer is kept track of so that we we can know the information uh, and reduce the number of operations of lookup so we don't have to go back and look up 
uh, once we are adding so in the merging phase you can see that in the merging phase I'm not going back right I'm not going back in the merging phase so as you saw again as I told you how is this full information how wh why do we call this approach this algorithm a full information because you can see that we did insertion and we did deletion and we created the projection tables you can see that when I created this projection table I cannot get the projection values without referring back to the base table called product because I ne I don't know if this P2 which is purchased by C1 or this P1 which is purchased by C2 is a food product or not so unless and until I know that I cannot I cannot know whether to add it to the projection or not so because for example let's say the the customer uh, we add a new record to the sales which is p3 so now when p3 is added i don't need to create a projection because p3 when i go back to my product it says that's a non-food so my view doesn't have to be updated so that's why we have to go back to our product base table and whenever we look at the base table that means we are working with full information The other one, as I told you, is full information for outer views. Now, the previous one that we did, we were working with joints, inner joints. Now, we are working with outer joints, outer views. So, the previous one was using non-recursive views, which are inner joints. And the second one we are using is outer joints. The same thing, we are still doing full information, but we have two different types of views that are created. One that is done using inner join, so that all the information that is available has to be part of both the tables right you remember we have to have matching information in both the tables when we create the join so a sales main cannot have any product that is not there a, sa a sales table may not have any customer or a product which is not there in my in my products table so in that in that case we are using the, we are using the joints we are using the inner joints so here in this case we are, suppose we, we change our case study we have a product table here we keep track of the product id product name and the shipment id and another table called shipper which is has ship id and ship name now we are uh, we are looking at two dimension tables right we are we're not looking at the fact table we are looking at two dimension tables product and shipper and they both have ship id which is ship name uh, which will give me the shipper's name uh, from this table and the product will have the product ID product name and the ship ID so when I create this the the view the materialized view I I keep I take the I'm doing an outer join you can see that I'm doing an outer join because if you look at this part I'm taking the product ID and product name from my shipper and then I'm using ship ID and ship name from the shipper table and you can see that this is an outer join outer join because you can see I have null values I have null values here and null values here so this is a full outer join so I'm having products which do not have a shipper name but they are still added to this table I have some shippers who have not yet shipped anything but I have still added them as a record over here with null values so this is full outer join okay so this is my this is my this is my SQL query that I'm using create view product shipper and I'm selecting the product ID and product name from the product table ship ID and ship name from the shipper table and I'm doing a full outer join on these two tables which is product and shipper uh, where I'm trying to match the unique IDs which is ship ID from both the product table and the shipper table let's talk about the a few things before we go into detail on how the operations of insertion and deletion work on outer join views whenever we modify anything to the product table we create as I mentioned earlier we create a projection called Delta plus and if we delete something we create a projection called Delta minus if it's for a product we say product and if it's for a shipper we say shipper so this is again this is I just wrote it down so that you remember in the previous cases when I was explaining I just told you the concept of a Delta table right uh, or projection table but here I'm just writing them so that you understand moving forward that the Delta tables keep track of any changes that are happening to a table either it is a product table or it's a shipper table 
Up the, uh, again, initially we, we I mentioned earlier that updates are done as deletions followed by insertion. So we delete the old record and we add the new one. We don't update the record immediately in the data store. The view maintenance is handled by rewriting the full outer join as either left or right outer join. So you will see that whenever we are performing view maintenance with outer joins, we have to rewrite the view. We have to rewrite the view rather than rather than updating the table. We are writing. We are rewriting the view uh, by using uh, new types of joins, which is left join or right join, based upon whichever table is updated. And we will see those examples in a little while. So let's go ahead and do that. So we are taking the same view that we created. We have a product and a shipper table, and we created a product shipper table, which is a full outer join of both the tables which is product and shipper now we take the product table and we take the shipper table the original original tables that we have and we, we perform an operation let's say uh, addition of a new uh, product p3 which is an mp3 player which is shipped by s2 right which is shipped by s2 now how does how what will happen you remember that whenever a change happens to a product table or a shipper table, we create a delta table. And that delta table will include that new information that we just found, which is P3, MP3 and S2. Clear? Okay. Now, the next part is we do, we got our projection, we got our projection table and then we use the shipper table now. And then we rewrite it. Remember, I told you the last part in maintenance is we are going to re-execute, re-execute the, 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 the join. But this time, the join I am doing is a left outer join. Ask me, if it was a live class, you would have asked me, why am I doing the left join? Because you see, which table is changed? The product table. So it is the left in, 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 in creating this product shipper, we have two tables, right? We have the left table and we have the right table. If any change happened to the left table, you always do a left outer join. If anything happens to this table, we do a right join and we can see, we will see that as an example also. So what happens is if a change happens here, we create a projection, we create a projection and then we use the base table that is why we are working, still working with full information, right? So we have we have to use the we have to use the uh, the uh, the base table, and we are going to use this table and this table. We are not merging them, but we are joining them because you see, I if I just merge it, I cannot merge it over here. The reason why I cannot merge it over here is because you remember we are not doing we do not have inner join. If this view was created with inner join then I would not have to go and ask the other table for more information because inner joins are expected to have all that information in them. But when you're doing an outer join, some of the information is coming from the other table, which is now I don't have that. Since I don't have that, I have to go and ask the other base table. So that's why we are taking two cases. We did one case with inner join and now we are doing the other case with outer join. Okay. So now we have this delta table and then we, we are going to use this delta table and use the base table which is shipper and what we do over here in this case is rewrite or redo a left join query. We are doing left because change happened to the left table which is the product table and then when we do this you know what will happen? I skip the step over here because we are going to do that later on when I explain it. So whenever we do this we do not directly create the view, right? We we first of all create, uh, we we create we get the delta view. We get us an intermediate table, intermediate join table, and that join table will include P3, MP3, S2, and then the two things, which is see. Remember, I am getting. I should get these these four values. So, what will the four values be? P3, MP3, S2. And we'll look if S2 is here. If S2 is here, then it will find and put DHL here. And then that record will be added to my original view. Now you can see that I have added that record, which is P3, MP3, S2 and DHL. Now you can see that when I added it, one record magically disappeared, which is this one. The reason why it disappeared is because now see, I don't need this record anymore. This is called a side effect. 
and we will learn that again as we move on. Uh, so you will see that this is called a side effect because we don't no longer need it. This record was only there because we were doing an outer join. We were doing an outer join and we did not have any product which was shipped by DHL or S2. So that's why we added the null. Now since with the new addition, I have now a product which is ordered by, which was shipped by S2. I no longer need this record because this record was only added because I didn't have any matching one. Remember the pants and the shirts, uh, the example that I gave you in the previous session. So this is the same thing. Previously, I did not have a matching pant or a shirt for something. And then later on, I added that matching, matching one. So I don't have to use null anymore. I have a matching pair now. So I can remove it. This is called side effect. And we will see that uh, in the few slides down. Okay, so just remember this. So now my view, this is how I changed my view. Again, you can see I'm using full information. How am I using full information? Because I'm referring back to the shipper. My query that I'm rewriting, the new query that I rewrote is a join query, which is working on these two tables, the, the delta table, the projection table, and the original base table. Okay. Now let's do this with the other table. Let's say, for example, we are modifying the shipper table. So for example, we have the, the previous two tables, which is product and, and shipper, and we are trying to add a new shipper, which is S3 Aramax. Okay, so once we are doing that again, this time we are going to create a projection, but the projection will be for the shipper. So once we create the shipper projection, we now add the new item, which is S3 and Aramex. Again, we have to make a join. Now this time, you can see that the join that I am doing is a right join. Again, if I ask you, why am I doing a right join? I'm doing a right join because I modified the right table, the right hand side table. And then, what I do is I put this record in the in the shipper table. Now, since I don't have a match, I don't have any record in the product table, any record in the product table that has shipper S3 here. Since I don't have that, then I will have to use null because I'm using outer join. You remember whenever you're using outer join, left or right, when you're using the right one, if there is no match in the left table, you use null. And the other and the opposite happens when we are doing the, the left join. If, if you don't find a match on the right side, use null. If you find a match, then good, you can use the values. If there is no match, then you put null. So here in this case, I don't have a matching one. So that's why I put null. Okay, so now we we discussed and the de deletion will be the same. I didn't I didn't discuss deletion for the outer views because when, once you are once you are deleting an item, again you will create a delta minus and then you will you will do a join. Delta minus join over here would mean that I'm trying to remove that item from the previous one. So it's a delta minus join rather than a delta plus join. So plus will add that information to it and minus will actually remove that information from the view. You don't, you don't, you will not create an intermediate join. You will directly affect the original table. Now, just to make the important information clear, we were talk talking about full information, right? So in both the cases, either we were using outer views or we were using the uh, inner join views, which is usually called as non-recursive views. In both the cases, we were looking at the information from the base tables. We had to go back and refer to them because without that, I could not complete my work. Okay, but there are some cases where you don't have to do that and that cases are referred in this algorithm, which is algorithm using partial views. Okay, so let's let's see what what do they do. So algorithm using partial views. It is not always possible to maintain a view using a partial information. Again, as I told you, it's not possible. Sometimes you cannot do it. So that's why you have to have uh, you have an algorithm which is a backup which does that information for you, you which which does that operation for you, right? So uh, that's partial information. So if you don't have that information, if you if you cannot do it, then you have to roll back. You have to go back to the algorithm using full information. But first, we have to check whether it is possible. If it's possible, then why waste the the call? Why waste the looking inf information? Because when you look at the base information, you remember as I told you, base tables are huge in size. So if you refer back to them, you are wasting a lot of time searching for that information 
and then using that information to update the view. The main reason you created the view was to reduce your time. And if you're going back and doing that again and again, you are going to waste a lot of time. And we don't want to do that. So that's why if it's possible to do it with partial information, then well and good. And we'll see how it saves the time. A view is referred to as a self-maintainable view if it can be maintained using only the view and the constraints. You remember I told you uh, in partial information, we expect that we can any change that happened to a base table can be updated and can be reflected back onto our algorithm and onto our uh, materialized view without, without looking to the base tables, right? So any table that can do that, any view, any materialized view that can do that is called as self-maintainable. You see that it's in the word itself, self-maintainable. I don't need to go back and look at, look at that information from the base table. I can update it myself. So those views which do not need to look, which cannot be, uh, to look back to the base tables to update themselves are called as self-maintainable. Now again, not all tables are self-maintainable. This is important in data warehouse because we do we do we do not we want to avoid accessing the base tables to update the materialized views or the summary tables. A view is self-maintainable with respect to the modification. So views are maintainable with respect to an operation because sometimes it may be insertion may be maintainable, but deletion is not maintainable. Okay, so for deletion you may have to go back and look at the base table but for insertion. So uh, the maintainability of a table depends on the operation itself, not just the tape, not just the view. The view doesn't have the characteristics for all operations. It can have for all, uh, but there are some cases where it can only be on a specific operation, either insert or delete or update operation. Now, when do we call it self-maintainable? It should not be maintainable uh, for just some small part of the tape of the view it should be self maintainable for all parts of the views you know all records in the views so you should not uh, you should not call a view a self maintainable view if it can only be maintained for some instances okay some instances it's not correct you it has to be maintainable for all instances all instances all records in the view but for operation, which or whichever operation, you can select, you can choose the insertion operation or the deletion operation. But for either operation, the views, the whole view should be maintainable rather than only some records that are maintainable, which is not correct. Okay. Now, let's take an example of something that is not maintainable. Okay. We just saw that, but again, it's good to know it. So we have sales, the same sales table that we have been using and we have a product table. And Let's suppose we delete a record from the sales table, which is P1, C3 and 50. We want to delete this record. Now, once I delete this record, you can see that whenever you delete or add something, you saw from previous examples that we create a delta table, right? We create a delta table and that delta table is C3 and minus 1. And when you do, when you do this operation, again, I will, based on that new delta table, I will create, I will update my view in the, the food products view that I created, I will update that view with C3. Now C3, as you can see before, maybe was one, right? Because I had, I had one here. I had one item here in the initial one. But when I changed this, when I deleted this, C3 minus one was done and then it became C3 zero. Now, I cannot delete C3 without checking if the customer ordered any other food product. So I have to go back to my sales table, look at the sales table, find information if that customer did not order anything which is related to it and then delete it. So I cannot delete it immediately. Okay. So that's why the self, the food products uh, view is not maintainable for deletion on sales. Okay. So that's why it's, it's not self-maintainable. If it has self-maintainable, it has to be maintainable without looking back on the other information from other tables. So, before we go into more detail, we, disc we, we understood now the definition of when can we call a view as self-maintainable. 
Okay. Now, there are some other things that also we need to know before we learn about the key characteristics of using the uh, partial information algorithm. The first one is we, we say that an attribute, any attribute, you see the columns inside my, my views, they are called distinguished if it appears in the select statement clause of a view definition. Let's see with example, right? Suppose we have this, we have this create view food prods that we have been looking at up till now, which has the customer key and the count and sales and product and which product is equal to the product key and the category is equal to food. Now you can see that in the select statement, I'm using one of the attribute, which is the C key. Now, since this attribute is appearing in my select statement, you when creating the view, this C key value is, is referred to as a distinguished attribute. Okay, that's the first definition. The second definition we also have to keep track of is that an attribute belonging to a relation in is exposed. Any attribute is said to be exposed if it is included in the predicate. Predicate is this, this clause. Whenever you have like where and some something here, something here which is restricting the number of records, this is called the predicate. So if you have any attribute here, which is restricting the number of records, this is called an exposed attribute. So this attribute here is called an exposed attribute. So in a view, you can have do the, these two attributes, right? If, a, if it is included in the view and it is included in the select statement, it's called a distinguished attribute. And if there is some attribute which is used only to make a decision for reducing the number of rows, we called it a exposed attribute. It is not in, you can see that this attribute, uh, this attribute over here, it's not included in the distinguished one. It's only used for making, making the size of the, of the view, the, the number of records in the view to be as a filter. So this category is used only as a filter. It's not included, it's not included in the view, but it is used as a filter for the view. Okay. So that's why it's called exposed. Now you will understand that when I'm, when I'm doing this, uh, if you apply you know the thinking that we have or you if you think on it more i know you will come to this eureka moment to say that yeah this cat if we have exposed attributes then there may be a problem right because if there are exposed attributes then these whenever we have a view which is created using exposed attributes we need that extra information which is where in the base table so if it is there in the base table we cannot say that this view is self-maintainable you got it? Okay, again, let me repeat it again, okay? Just for the sake of understanding, I'm going to repeat it again. The, the reason why these two definitions are important, when because when we want to, we want to define what is self-maintainable. We should be able to know which operation, which view is self-maintainable and which is not self-maintainable. Because in the future, what we want to do is, if it's maintainable, then I have to use on the only the algorithm used for partial information. If it is not self-maintainable, then I have to use the algorithm for full operation, full information. So this information is important when deciding whether something is maintainable or not maintainable. So if you have in the creation of a view, any attribute which is exposed, that means that that view cannot be self-maintainable. And we will see that as we go on. So any, any view that has this, exposed attribute may not be self-maintainable because you are filtering the information from the uh, from the from the view and the only way to know that information is to go and look from the base table you remember the same thing that was happening to us how do we know if the customer the customer who bought the product is actually a the, the product that they bought is is a food product or not and we cannot know this until and unless and until we go back to the the table of the product which is the base table so why was this because we created the view using that information and it is not part of the view so i cannot i cannot get that information from the view itself so i have to go back to the base table to get that information that is the reason why it is called exposed attribute okay and then if the attribute is there, if the attribute is included in the view, then it is called as a distinguished attribute. Okay. Now, there is a view maintenance theory. We have like three cases 
when we can say something is self-maintainable or not self-maintainable. That is called the view maintenance theory. As any select project join is not self-maintainable with insertions. So if whenever you create a projection, whenever you perform a select query on uh, and create a projection and then you do a join on that projection because you are now, see, you are in this example that we did, we have, we were joining this one with this one, with the base table. So whenever you have something like this, whenever you are joining the, the projection with the base table, it is not maintainable. Again, because why? Common sense. Because I am looking to the base table. So I cannot create, uh, I cannot have an operation, any operation, any operation that goes back and looks for that information in the base table. And this is only for insertion because when you are inserting something, you want the information to be complete here. So that's why you're looking for that missing information here from the product table. In a deletion, you don't have to go back, right? In a deletion, you can just go directly here and see if that item is there and remove it. That's it. So you don't have to look at the base table when you're deleting it. But when you are adding it, you have to go back. When you are adding it, you have to go back and check it. So that's why any, any operation which is using select project and join the join operation right or left for insertion cannot be maintainable because you have to go back and get that information from the base table other case any select okay so the second case is any select project join which is the same operation that we saw above can be self-maintainable can be self-maintainable with respect to deletion you remember i just told you it can be delete it can be maintainable with respect to deletion not insertion insertion never insertion never but deletion if the key attributes if the key attributes in the in the in the relation are either included in the view or has some value in the view so for example, whenever we are having something over here, that value should be here somewhere, should be here somewhere so that I don't have to go back to the base table. So if I'm trying to delete something from, delete something from this table and that information that is here, the key information that is here is already available here. I will not have to go back to my product table, this table, right? I don't have to go back. All the information I need is here. So if that is the case in deletion, then it's fine. Then I don't have to, then that operation can be maintainable with respect to deletion only. With insertion, never. As I told you, with insertion, never. With deletion, it is possible only, only when the information, the key attributes, the key attributes that are here should be included with some other values, either a default value and I mentioned here so that I know that I can delete it without looking back to the base table. Okay. The third one in the view maintenance is uh, view maintenance theory is that a left or a full outer join. Now we are not going to do look at the right outer join. We are looking only at the left outer join. So if a left outer join or a full outer join is the view is created using left or full outer join using two tables, which is R and S over here or P and S, which is product and shipper, such that the keys of both R and S are distinguished. Let's go step by step. Let's go step by step, right? So let's say the view is created by using either full join or left join. First thing. And then the keys of both of these, both of the relation R and S, here we are referring this to R and this to S, the keys are distinguished. That means, what is the key here? Product ID. What is the key here? Shipper ID. Are they included here? Yes. You remember what is, when is someone, something called as distinguished? When this key, when, when the value, when the, when the attribute is included in the view, when the attribute is included in the view. So you can see that the key is included in the view, right? Shape ID and product ID. So that means these two are 
these two key are keys for the two tables and they are distinguished because they are included here. So that is the first requirement, are distinguished and all exposed attributes, exposed attributes of R are distinguished as well. So if we have any, because he, here we don't have it, exposed attributes are those when we are trying to reduce the size, right? Reduce the size of the table. Here we are just joining them. We are just joining them on the keys. So let's say if we had, if we had an exposed attribute, any attribute which was trying to filter it, we have that attribute should be uh, exposed as well, should be distinguished as well. So that means if you are modifying it, the attribute should be here, included here somewhere. It should not be, because in the previous one, you remember in the food category, we did not have category here. The category was only in this table. So the only possible way when a view can be maintainable is that the exposed attributes are distinguished and the keys are distinguished. This is the main, just remember this. So whenever we are doing a join, if the keys, the key, the primary keys of both the tables are distinguished and the exposed attributes are also distinguished, then only we can say that the table, the view that is created is self maintained. Now let's look at the algorithm for implementing partial information using partial information, which is for self-maintainable, right? So let's say we have two tables, which is product and shipper. These are the base tables, as I told you before. And from these base tables, we created a view, which is called the product shipper view. Okay, And we have been doing this uh, example. And now you can see that when we are talking about this, this table itself, in the product shipper, when we have the view and we take part of the view which is the, which is related to the shipper, which is coming from the shipper, which is ship ID and ship name, right? Whatever is coming from the second relation, not the first relation, second relation. You remember because we are, whenever we are doing self-maintainable uh, items, we are focused on left join and full join. Right join is not considered. Right join is not considered because we are expecting that the right join elements uh, we are always looking at the table from the left hand side or it's a full join. So that means you don't have to worry about it. So that's why when we are using partial information, you are looking at the left or full join. So let's say, for example, we had a join. We had the uh, join of these two tables, which is a full join. You can see it's a full join right now. So we have a full join. So whenever we have a view like this, that view has some part from the, the second relation, not the first relation, which is product is the first relation. So we have some part of that from the second relation, which is the shipper relation. We call this the, that part, that part of the view, the projection on the second table, projection on the second table. So if you just look at this information, we just take this information out. Let's take this information out, which is when we create a projection. Again, as I told you, this is just a projection. Projections are not saved. Projections are created inside the memory and then they are removed because they are just used for intermediate operations like the delta ones, delta plus, delta minus, all of them are projections. Projections are something that is created to store something temporarily and then you remove it. Okay. So let's say, for example, I from the view, I was able to get part of the table which is related to the second relation, which is shipper. And I extract it into a projection and that projection has ship ID and ship name. And then anything that is null, I just simply remove it. So I get this. You can see that when I do this, I get my original table, right? I get this one is equal to this one. You know why this happened? Because I'm either, either I, am, I have a full join or I have a left join. If I have a left join, then whatever left is here will, will have something of included in the shipper over here. Okay. So I, I can, I can get that information from this part. So what is happening in, in, in this, in the, in, in self-maintainable, how, how we, how do we make it work without looking back at the shipper? We try to get that from here. We try to get this information from here. Since it is a full join, you can see that I can get that information. How do I get the information? I get, first of all, the part of the table, which is related to the second relation, second relation. 
and then in that second relation I get that table which is the projection table and then I just remove the null which doesn't have any value and then I will get this one will be my projection and you can see now my projection is equal to my this table. So now whenever I have an operation which is performed I don't need to go back and look at the shipper table. I can look at the project projection of the shipper table which I which I got from my shipper from the view. You remember again the first definition I told you when does an algorithm use uses partial information what is the difference between algorithms that use partial information and full information in full information you have to go back and look at the base tables in partial information I never go back to the base tables I am I can only use the information from the views so I, what I did I took the view I took part of the view and created a projection and then use I'm going to use that as my projection of the shipper table I don't have the original one because the original is a base table. So I'm going to use a projection of that table, which is already there in my view, already available in my view. Let's talk about the first operation, which is the insertion operation. So now let's suppose we created the created the uh, projection for the shipper from the from the view called product shipper. And then we have my the original tables, you know, the remember the product tables, the product and the shipper tables, and we have the operation where we are trying to insert a new item or two new items one of them is p3 mp3 and s2 and the other one is p4 pc and i don't have a shipper for it which that's why i put null so i'm trying to add this two over here what do i do first you remember the same thing i create a projection in that projection i will add include those records which i'm trying to add it's a delta plus once i do that then i perform a join you see, I'm, in the previous examples, I was joining with this shipper, right? But now I don't have to do that because now I can get that information from my view, which I created over here. So I'm doing a left jo join with the shipper, with this one, not with this one. Because this is my base table. So I don't want to go back to my base table anymore. So that's why I will do it with these two. And then when I do it with these two, I, created, I create a join. I create a join table. And this is not my final table, right? Remember, this is not my final table. I create a join table because I want to fill in the missing information, which is which is coming from here. That information is what this S2 has. This S2 has a name. I got it, which is DHL. Null, because I don't have any shipper, I will just use null and null here. That's why I'm using a left join. And then once I do that, you can see that these are my ba base tables. I did not use them. I did not use them at all when I was trying to access this. And then once I did that, once I have this join table that I created from the previous one, I will merge it with my view. This was my original view, remember? And then I merge them together. And then when I merge them together, what do I do? First I take the first one and add this, the second one and the third one which is already there, which is finished. And then the new ones that I have, I add them here. We can see that already I have some side effects. You remember the side effect part of it? This is a side effect. Previously, I did not have anything which was matching S2 through S and DHL. But now I added this new record which is matching this. So I have to remove the side effect because this will this table will not be correct. Because we I already have S2 which is DHL which is related to this. So this row is useless for me now. The only reason it was added was because I was doing a full join and I needed that information. But now I don't need that information because it's already here. It is already represented over here. So in that case, I will just remove the side effect and I will get my final view. Now you saw that in all that operation that I did just now, I did not look into the base tables. I created this join using, the, using a projection from this table, which is the view, which is this one, which is this part. And I recreated my shipper table from, these, from this information. And then I used it for the join and then I used to merge both of them and then I remove the side effect. That's it. Okay. Now for the deletion operation, we do something similar again. First, the first part was again, we create the shipper, we create the view for the shipper. And then we have these two tables. We want to remove the record, which is P2, uh, TV, uh, sorry, P1, TV and S1. That is the first record in my 
table. So I want to delete that from the table, right? So if I want to delete that again, the same thing, I would create a projection table, a min delta minus table, delta minus projection table. And then I do a join between the delta minus and the project shipper to get the missing information, right? So I get P1, TV, S1 and FedEx, which is available from my projection table. I, I mean, again, I'm not going back to the shipper table, right? And then this is the same thing. I'm avoiding the accessing the base tables. And then once I have this, once I have that information, the join table, I remove that part, remove that record from my shipper table, which is that's why I'm doing a minus. I'm not merging them. I am doing an intersection. So I'm going, I'm trying to remove that information from the product shipper table. And you can see that I, if I remove that first record, I get the remaining ones. Now, again, I, doing that, I created a side effect. Do you know what the side effect is? You see, I'm missing now S1 and FedEx here. So this, this part of the table is not complete. There is something missing here. Because this was the only product that was ordered from S1 and FedEx. Now, if I remove it immediately, I will lose that information. So this is called a side effect. Because there is no S1 FedEx here. So there should be. Okay, so before removing, I will see if I have, I have no other record which has S1 FedEx, I will try to add a null for it. Okay, so I will try to add a record which is using null on both product ID and product name. So this is how deletion works. Again, throughout the whole process, you just saw that I never, I never looked into my base tables. That's why it is called as partial information. Okay. Now, this is about view maintenance. So we saw, we, this is the major part of the, of the lecture, uh, which is how to maintain the views, which is the most important part. That's why it is included as the first one. Now, there are two other issues that we also encountered. The second one was, how do we select which materialized views to create, which is the selection of because it's possible that you can create as many as possible, right? Because these are these are called these are summary tables. These are tables which are created intermediately. So you do not want to calculate them for all possible options. It is not possible. Okay, it is not possible. So the goal here is to select an appropriate set of views so that we can only run important queries which will reduce the response time and also if we create too many of them we will have to maintain them right so we want to make a balance we want to create only those that are important so that we can invest time in reducing the response time and also we will not waste much time in maintaining the views because we know that is important so we invest time in maintaining the view uh, otherwise if we create a view which is not very useful but you still have to maintain it right because you, you created the view, you have to maintain it. Otherwise, the information in that view would be wrong. So that's why we want to create a balance between these two things. The reason why we have to do this is because we have limited space, because views take up space, right? And we, we, in terms of resources, we have both materialization time. Materialization time is the creation and maintenance of the views and also storage space, where you are actually going to store the physical table of the view. There are many algorithms that are proposed to handle this, which is selection of which one. And it's a recent research area. If you go back to Google Scholar and search for uh, techniques used for selection of views, selection of uh, materialized views for a data warehouse, you will find papers published in 2020. So that's why we are not going to cover this. This is like a very exhaustive topic. Even the textbook I'm referring to does not talk about it. So it's better we, we just consider on, we fo just focus on view maintenance, but selection, we just know that what it is and uh, why is it important. If you want to take up uh, more, if you are interested in this area, go ahead and search for that information and you know, you can study that on your own time. The other thing that we also talked about is something called as query rewriting, right? Query rewriting, we are trying to address uh, data warehouse Whenever we are making queries to a data warehouse, if we are using views, we have to rewrite our queries so that we can 
we can we can make effective use of the materialized views so it whenever we are rewriting the queries we are trying to use the material view materialized views as much as possible even if it's only partially to fulfill the query conditions because we want to if we have created the view we have to take advantage of it and how do we take advantage of it by using by using queries that can access the views selecting the best policy best way of rewriting the query is not easy it's a complex process it involves uh, a lot of uh, aggregations you have to check and you have to because now we are going to replace our base tables with our views right so there should be a lot of things that we have to consider when doing that so there are again in literature there are many algorithms that are proposed for writing for query rewriting when we have materialized views and again this is not in the scope of this course so we will just focus on the uh, focus mainly on the maintenance of the views okay so that's more uh, important for us in this course and thank you very much so we covered in this lecture uh, mainly about what are materialized views how do they help in increase enhancing the performance of uh, running queries on a data warehouse and we saw that when we create when we we know that materialized views have an added advantage because we don't have to go back to the database and do the joins but the problem with them is we have to maintain them we have to rewrite our queries we have to select the best views we don't we cannot create all materialized views so in that case we have to go back and think what are the strategies to to reduce these issues you know techniques that we can use to maintain views without getting information from the base tables as much as possible and then rewrite the queries so that they get information from the views there rather than getting information from the queries also selecting those views creating only those views maintaining only those views that are important and not creating every view because with summary tables it is it is uh, it is a unlimited uh, open option you can add as many views as possible so this is the main idea so in the next lecture which is the follow up lecture for this we will be covering mainly about mainly about the next two techniques which is indexing how does indexing help enhance the performance of the data warehouse and also we are going to look at partitioning in partitioning we divide the 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 table uh, so that uh, we can run multiple queries in parallel over the over the uh, data warehouse so parallelization using partitioning and indexing uh, so these are the two things that we'll discuss in the next lecture